So, the syllabus dot points, relationship with Hitler. So here's a couple of things that we want to think about for each of these dot points. Historians debate how close they actually were, Speer and Hitler. Uh, so that's the main thing. So, what attracted them to each other, how the relationship changed over time and why. So, they, they obviously meet pre-war. What happens as we enter wartime? What happens as things go badly? What happens as, uh, as the relationship goes from kind of dictator and architect to dictator and minister for war armaments? It's a, quite a change. Um, and finally, the issue of whether Speer actually tried to kill Hitler or not. Okay, so there's a lot of conjecture about that as to whether he just made that up at the trial to try and gain some favour and to try and kind of put himself as far away from Hitler as possible. Um, yeah, for starters, they, they, they can't find the vent that he said was there. just doesn't appear to have ever been there. You'll see that in Spear and Hitler if you get through to the end of the 84 hours of documentary. B, what was his involvement with anti-Semitic activities in connection with the Germania project. So this is the Jew flats. So historians debate how involved Speer was in the Jew flat kind of situation where they were all deported, uh, and they, they look at what he actually knew about what would happen to them. So did he know uh, what his office was doing in clearing out all the Jew flats? Uh, did he know where the Jews were being deported to? Many of them went straight to concentration camps. Uh, did he deliberately try to hide this at Nuremberg? So was there a concerted effort by his office to hide the fact that he knew all this? And finally, how did his knowledge get revealed, i.e. the Walter Chronicle? C. His use and abuse of forced labour. Uh, those people that are struggling with notes, remember I'm video, videoing this and you can, in your own time, listen to every word that I say and write some more notes if you want. So it's illegal under international law to use forced labour, so prisoners of war or members of occupied countries. Uh, clearly, Spear knowingly used them. Most definitely. No, he asked for more of them. Why did he do that? Mainly because the Nazis didn't let women work. So the Allied forces were very happy for women to work. The Nazis said, no, no, this is part of their social policy. Women shouldn't work. Women should be at home. Uh, and they stuck to it. So he used a whole lot of uh, slave... I keep putting H's in front of S's today. Slave labour. Uh, so, what are the issues? What was Spare's uh, relationship and hierarchy with Saukel, who was technically his underling um, in some respects, and who received a death sentence for what he did? Uh, how did he treat his labourers? Did he actually want them to be treated well? Uh, there are some reports uh, where he has said, we need to feed these guys more. The question is, did he say that so that they could work for longer before dying, or did he actually not want them to die? Um, did he abuse his forced labourers? Did he use forced labour as an architect? So not just um, during war armaments, did he actually use them when building projects? And finally, which camps did he actually visit? What did he see when he visited them? We know for sure he visited the Dora facility um, under the mountain, one of the V2 rocket facilities where they were building things, where terrible conditions. Uh, up to a third of people working under the mountain died. A third. Uh, basically worked to death. D. What were his knowledge and links with the concentration camp system? Basically, this point deals with how much did Speer know about the Holocaust and the persecution of the Jews? So, a couple of issues. Was uh, Speer present at the Posen meeting on 6th of October 1943? This is a meeting where uh, Himmler outlines to all the Gauleiters, all the governors, he outlines exactly what the final solution is and what it entails. Okay, so he, he is sitting there saying, uh, this is what we're going to do, this is the final solution, we will take all the remaining Jews, send them to concentration camps, we've got big gas chambers, we're going to exterminate the entire race. So if Speer was at that meeting, then straight away he knows everything. Now, Speer actually spoke at that meeting before Himmler was there. So what Speer claims was, I went to there, I spoke, and I left straight after I finished speaking, and I didn't hear anything that happened afterwards. That was Speer's account. 
Now, there's a lot of conjecture over this. One of the key things that we find is that Himmler's actual notes, someone took notes, and in one of, some of Hitler's notes, Himmler says, um, we, wouldn't that, we wouldn't want that to happen, would we? And I'm not talking about you over there, Mr. Spare. And then he continues speaking. Which sounds a lot to me like he's making an aside and looking at Albert Speer in the room. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Okay, so historians debate this. Um, so, was he present at the meeting? Uh, which camps did he visit? When did he visit them? Was it, was it after they started killing uh, in a kind of concentrated way in, a, in the final solution? Was it after that was set up or was it before? Uh, did he tell people he was coming so they would clean the camps up so that when he arrived, it would look like everything was fine and in order? Or not? Uh, was he actually anti-Semitic? So we saw in the interview that he had with Karl Dönitz, he was very proud in saying, look, in all the speeches I made, and I made heaps of them, not a single anti-Semitic remark was made in them. And that was during a time when it would have been great to make anti-Semitic remarks. That was during a time when everyone else was. So that's his way of saying, I am not anti-Semitic. Okay, at the same time, he's a very smart guy. Did he know at the time, I'm on public record, I'm sure as hell not going to say anything anti-Semitic in case we lose this war. And I can use that as a defence. Who knows? Uh, how much do you know about Hitler's anti-Semitism? And finally, did he cover things up at Nuremberg? All right, did he actually make a concerted effort to, to hide how much he knew and the things that he knew would get him in trouble? Obviously, using someone that's on the outside, discussing with someone and going and doing things. E, reaction to Hitler's a scorched earth policy in 1945. So again, there's a little doubt that Speer actually opposed the scorched earth policy. The issues include, how did he go about opposing it? And why could he have not done it to Hitler's face? So he did it in a way that was kind of sneaky. Why didn't he stand up to, stand up to him? And what was his motivation in resisting it? Was it self-preservation? Was it him trying to look good? Note, this is at a time when they have most definitely lost. Everyone agrees they've lost. That's why it's the scorched earth policy. So does he know he's going to come up for a trial or something? And is he just basically looking at, well, I'm going to try and save my own skin and look good? F, the significance of his work as Minister for Armaments and War Production to the overall German war efforts. So uh, Speer makes bold claims in his book about the significance of his efforts. Um, so, for example, he says that he lengthened the war by at least a year. Um, so what are the issues have we got? Uh, were the increases in production as significant as Speer says? What's the statistical evidence for that? Uh, were the, the methods used to do this? So were they his methods? Were they his predecessor, Tots? Were they Rathenau, Walter Rathenau, another guy that worked with him? And why would he emphasise this area in his book? Because he's claiming the technocrat defence. He's saying, that work became my life. And it's his way of being able to say, oh, I wasn't thinking about the politics, I wasn't thinking about the ideology, I was looking at doing my job and I did it so well that you can see that I did it full time. So it's building this picture that he wants us to see of himself. G, final evaluation. Uh, this is what you're doing in your assessment task, in your essay. This is what you're doing. Um, so we're not going to look at it. You're going to do it in your assessment task for example. All right, so for the next week and a half, I'd like us to look at, so we've got a whole, I've got a whole lot of little extracts of books. Um, you're going to select one of them and read sections of it, get familiar with it, and for each of those points, find quotes and complete a table that's in the booklet. All right, once you do it well, we'll compare notes and copy and, and stuff like that. All right.